Hello, it's Maddie F. Baby here to do some Jungle Cup action for you. And today we're going to be going over a couple of top meta picks. Instead of doing solo dives on the Pokemon, I'm now going to do them in groups of two or three. Doesn't mean the Pokemon are going to be related to each other. It's just going to be two or three Pokemon that I think are going to be really prevalent in the meta. So today we're going to be going over Alolan Graveler as well as Heracross. If you can't get your hands on Heracross, Please try to. He's really good. Um, he can handle both Fortress and Vigoroth. Um, and he does really well against both of them. So we're just going to get rolling. I'm going to tell you a little bit about these Pokemon and hope you enjoy. Alright, so Heracross is going to be a bug and fighting type Pokemon. It's going to be two times weak to Flyers. And then it's also going to be weak to Fire, Psychic, and Fairy. You're going to easily want Counter as the fast move. It gets 3.5 energy per turn. And then the preferred move set, you get to pick one charge move. It's going to be Mega Horn. Honestly, I think you get away with going close combat and here's my reason why is because your biggest um, counter is going to be the flyers so let's say that you had the switch advantage to where they're locked in so you get to down whoever you brought your hair across into now they bring in their flyer to come wreck you most of the flyers there are going to be some that are going to be bugged but a lot of them are also going to be half normal types so um, close combat will be able to do neutral damage to those instead of resisted which is what megahorn would do but PV poke and probably the majority of people will say Megahorn is on um, the preferred moveset and I definitely understand why it procs one whole second faster and yeah it does a lot of damage either way so it'll help you out with those uh, grass type um, encounters as well. It's going to be neutral um, to like a Venusaur um, whereas the close combat will be um, resisted. But then you go ahead and you look at something like a Sceptile, it's going to be super effective against a Sceptile. So yeah, let's just get going. Now let's look at the key matchups. It does well against Vigoroth, not really well. You can see battle rating only 575. Above 500 is a win, and then the higher above 500 is, the better it is at winning. So you can see it does like the best against a Magna Zone, but also right below it, it has Fortress. And that's what's so amazing about Heracross, is that it is a counter to the two main big dogs. Big dog has got to eat... And Heracross says, well, I'm going to eat y'all up too. So it does really well against Vigoroth and Fortress. And that's why it's really hard for me right now to um, not pack Heracross on a team at three. I'm having a hard time, like, leaving them off my teams at three. But as I said, it also does well against Magnezone. And then you see some other really prominent heavy hitters in the meta, in my opinion, in Golem and Graveler, the Alolan. Those are both going to be really mainstays in the meta as well, is what I predict. And so you can just look at its key matchups. It has really, it has positive matchups against a lot of the top meta, in my opinion. So that's what's so special about Heracross. And it is going to be taking neutral damage from, like, the rock fast moves of Golem and Graveler. But it's still going to be hitting them with super effective damage. So overall, it's going to have a plus matchup, even if it is just squeezing them out. And then its top counters are going to be um, some stuff that's like bug and flying that can resist a lot of what it has to throw at you, like Masquerin, Scyther, Yanma, Dustox, and Celebi. So that's what it has to watch out for. Next, looks, next, next let's look at the charge move activation time. So um, it, with a counter and Megahorn combo, it takes 8 counters and 8.5 seconds to get off a Megahorn. And then you look over at close combat, it takes 9 counters and 9.5 seconds. So those are the two most prominent moves, and I'm going to try to get both on mine. Next, let's go over here and let's look at the A Lowland Graveler. So it's going to be rock and electric type. It's going to be vulnerable two times to ground and then regular vulnerability to fighting, water, and grass. Rock throw is going to be the preferred move set for the fast move. And then you want rock blast and thunderbolt. Um, thunderbolt and stone edge both proc at the same time. And uh, yeah, you already got Rock Blast over there with a lot less energy. So that's why it's going to be really the move that you're going to end up using 90% of the time probably because there's not a bunch of situations in this cup where something is takes super effective or neutral hits from Rock Blast and it doesn't do the same. Um, where, where Thunderbolt would actually come in and do better. Um, I was looking at the typings and I was like, wow, I don't really don't see that really many cases where you're going to need um, you're going to need electric where rock wouldn't also work. So, But just for a little bit of flexibility, we'll go Thunderbolt over Stone Edge, which is the other possibility. And just real quick, um, just want to let you know it's two times resistant to flying moves, so that's pretty cool because um, I think they pair well together. Um, you can use the, f the Graveler or Golem to take out um, the flying counter of your Heracross, and then you can use Heracross to deal with a lot of the meta. So I really think these two Pokemon pair well together. The key matchups are Noctowl, um, Caesar, 
Beedrill, Fortress, and Pidgeot. So it's going to do pretty well against Fortress as well. So you have two things that can handle Fortress, but this is not going to be as ideal as the Heracross. And then it does the Pidgeot. So any of those flyers, like I said, and anything that's like a bug and flying type does not want to see they do not want to see, like a Scyther doesn't want to see this, like a Vespa Queen, because it's going to be two different types of vulnerabilities from the rock. Double double weakness. And then its top counters is a lot of the Grass Boys. You got Torterra, Bayleaf, um, Cherum, Cherum, and Blossom. But really what we're going to worry about mostly is uh, stuff like a Vigoroth with a counter is going to hurt us. Um, and then it can use Brick Break as well. And then you got other Heracrosses that can hurt us. So yeah, um, we have... The charge move activation time, so it takes the same amount of time to get a Rock Blast off with an Alolan Graveler as it does for a Heracross to get a Mega Horn off. It takes 8 fast moves and 8.5 seconds. And then for Thunderbolt, it takes a lot longer. It's going to be 11 fast moves for 11.5 seconds. So let's go look at the battles. Alright, here we go. This is my first two matches ever for Jungle Cup, and they're against the boy Pokey AK. And so it's a great lead for us, Noctowl versus our Alolan Graveler. Next comes in the V. Venusaur, we elect to switch over to our Heracross. I'm not sure how much the Sludge Bomb is going to hurt, and that's when I learned it's going to hurt. So we um, are going to not show the second one either. Wow, that was silly. Oh yeah, I decided that I was going to bring in my Masquerin. That's why I was going to bring in my Masquerin and use those uh, um, flying fast attacks to take it down. So Heracross, I just kind of sacrificed. I probably should have shielded the Sludge Bomb there. So that's so you know, Sludge Bomb on Heracross. And here's where I make a huge mistake as well, because Normal is going to be immune to Ominous Wind. So I should have went with the Silver Wind, and then it would have just been resisted and not immune. So this is a great matchup for Noctowl. And honestly, I should have switched, um, or no, yeah, I can't switch now, duh. Alright, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and get his silver wind off this time, he's blocking away. We come back in with our Lolan uh, Graveler and tank the Sky Attack, which we are double resistant to, and finish it off. Next comes in Manectric, and we have a Rock Blast ready to go. So GG, that's going to um, be a good match for us, and we're going to get to our Rock Blast before, oh no, not before, we got to shield this and then get to our Rock Blast, and then it's going to finish him off. So yeah, GG to Pokey AK, and these are my first ever six matches ever, just straight in a row, um, just in a row. I love the way the Noctowl just sits like that, so it just worked out really well. Um, my first six matches were all wins, and yeah, I've actually won a lot for Jungle Cup. I've only lost two series thus far, um, against J Devin and against Seven, and I've probably lost about five or six matches total out of like 12 to 14 series at this point. I'm doing really well for Jungle so far. Um, anyways. Here we go, there's a low on Graveler time. So this is gonna be a good matchup for us. We're gonna be able to resist everything that it throws at us, but the Wild Charge still hurts. And still a powerful move. We were going to take him down with just our fast moves, but then we'd have to shield, so yeah. We force him to use a shield as well. So now we both are down a shield, and that's gonna put him down to zero shields. And gonna give us a little bit of energy going into our next fight. Takes a little while for his Pokemon to come out, and then it's Cradilia again. We are able to get to that Rock Blast and finish that bad boy off, and then he's got another Pokemon coming, you know? Cradilia is not looking as good as I think a lot of people thought it was going to, so this is going to be a great matchup for us. Noctowl versus Golo and Graveler, and you can see my Lolan Graveler just did a lot of work this match. So next I bring in the Fortress, who's going to get... Um, He's going to get finished off by this Sky Attack, and then my Heracross is going to come out and just use one counter to, to clean up the Noctowl. Alright, so this is now the second series I've faced against someone, and I've led with Alone Graveler the first game of both those matches, and they have both led with Noctowl the first match. So I've been seeing a lot of Noctowl leads thus far, and it's been really nice when I do um, predict that and throw the Alone Graveler out. Dozer elects not to take out his... Um, Noctowl and I elect not to shield, which was a mistake. I thought it was going to be a sky attack, and yeah, I thought it was going to be something that I triple resist, and it was not. So we get another Rock Blast going off against his Porygon, and now he is down to zero shields. After that, we are going to bring in our Heracross, um, because we know he has a fire fast move. As you can see, it is dealing a lot of damage to us, but we know that our counter is going to do major work to that normal type Porygon. Next comes in a Caesar, who we're also going to have a decent matchup against, a plus matchup, because our counter is going to be neutral and they're going to hurt a lot. As you can see, even though he resisted the Mega Horn, he still did massive damage and still did about 50%. So here we go. 
Rears Alolan Graveler versus Heracross. I do get a lot of damage down on the Alolan Graveler, but I want to preserve my Heracross a little bit, so I decide to switch to Vigoroth. They both are going to have great fast move damage against the Alolan Graveler, so I elected to do that in case there was something I needed, like a Vigoroth later, that my Heracross would have a better matchup against, because I don't want to use my Vigoroth against their Vigoroth. I'd rather use my Heracross against their Vigoroth, so that's why I decided to switch there. And so he brought in the cast form, which is also going to take bad damage um, from our... And he has a team that is really... This first team is really weak, or second team that he uses, is really weak to the counters. So every single Pokemon he had was weak to our counter fast moves, and I just so happened to have two Pokemon that had counter as uh, their fast moves. So that worked out for me. And I think I'm going to um, eat this. So yeah, we do eat this with the Vigoroth, and we are able to finish off this the Munchlax with, with our... Um, with our Vigoroth. After that, he's gonna bring that Graveler back in, and we're gonna come back in with our Heracross to finish off the Graveler. All right, so here we go. Three straight matchups against three separate trainers, and the first lead was always Noctowl, and it, so I've seen a lot of Noctowl leads so far, and it's been really nice because I, you know, I've been catching them with a lot of Gravelers, so it's been really nice, and the Graveler helps protect my Heracross. As long as I don't lose my Graveler, you know, it's really helpful. So here comes in the Heracross, and this is where I'm saying that it would be kind of nice to have close combat, hitting for neutral, and but he blocks it anyways. Um, so after that, we're going to go ahead and bring our Graveler back in and try to get to town on this Noctowl. I'm going to use a Rock Blast, which he's going to shield up. Now he's out of shields. My buddy Ray, my buddy the poorest boy. And so he hits us with a Nightshade. I didn't want to get hit with the Psychic again like I did earlier. So I elect not to, um, or I elect to shield there and not to eat it. Next comes in a Vigoroth. We're going to go ahead and get off a of Rock Side and go switch over to our Chatot and try to um, put in something that will tank the hits a little bit better. It's going to be neutral um, from the counters instead of taking super effective damage like the Long Graveler does. But we we do take um, better, better, whatchamacallit. We do take um, more resist, uh, we resist his charge moves better as far as the body slam. We don't resist the the um, low kick, not the low kick, whatever, whatever the, yeah, I think it might be low kick, whatever the fighting charge move that Big Roth has, and we don't, we definitely don't resist the bulldoze with our Graveler. But anyways, we have Sceptile in with our crew this time. Um, here comes the Noctowl, so we decide to switch into our guy. This seems like it's pretty low energy, so we're expecting the Sky Attack, and thankfully it was. Um, we get to a Rock Blast, and we ate the Sky Attack, because we're going to be double resistant to that. So he elects to let the Noctowl go down, and then comes in the Vigoroth. We're going to get, um, I think we don't shield this. I think we just let him hit us. It, it, oh, it was Brick Break, not Low Kick. Low Kick is a fast move, dumb Maddy. That's what I meant, Brick Break. So yeah, we elect to let him go down and bring in our Heracross because our Heracross has a nice plus matchup. Um, you know, the Body Slam is going to hurt, but we can take him down with just the counters. And then we have a Mega Horn ready to go. We both have two shields left, but I have uh, more Pokemon left. And so he's only got that little itty bitty piece of that Ludicolo left. And we're going to be taking uh, taking them down pretty easily. So there's the battles. There we go. There's a little info on a Lowland Graveler and Heracross, which are going to be two um, prominent figures in the meta, is my prediction. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure that you subscribe to me, please. Uh, yeah, that would be really helpful to me. It would mean a lot, and it would help you out in the future as well. Hope you guys enjoyed everything. Y'all have a nice day. Peace out.